All right, hello students. Working on our learning target of comparing linear exponential and quadratic functions. And the big idea that we talked about at the beginning of the unit and that we've talked similar, similar about this all year long is linear means that you're always plus or minus a constant number. Quadratic is our new one. Oops, I meant to write exponential first. Okay, we'll go to exponential now. Exponential means that you're always multiplying or dividing by a constant. But quadratic is our new one. The quadratic means that the rate of change is linear. And so you can say that as plus or minus a linear pattern. So let's look here. As I go from one y value to the next, I see minus 3, minus 1, and plus 1. So it's not uh, plus or minus a constant because the numbers are changing. It's not times or divide by a constant because I would have to go 3 times 0, and then 0 times anything won't make negative 1. So it can't be exponential, so it has to be quadratic. And if you notice, this pattern right here is increasing by 2 every time. So the change pattern is linear, which means that the original pattern is quadratic. So you could just say, because it changes at a linear rate. Okay. Moving on to slide number 2. This one, if you look at the y values, you can notice that the y values go plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So that one is pretty clearly linear. Moving on to slide 3. We here up here, it goes plus 2 and plus 3. So you're thinking, oh, maybe it's not, it's not linear. Maybe it's exponential. Maybe it's quadratic. And then it goes plus 4.5. This is not a linear pattern of change because it doesn't go up by 1 each time. This turns out to be exponential because if I go 6 divided by 4, I get 1.5. If I go 9 divided by 6, I get 1.5. And if I do 13.5 divided by 9, I get 1.5. This is an exponential pattern where you get to each successive number by multiplying by 1.5. So this is exponential. So what do you look for when you're deciding what type of graph or what type of function it is? You look for how the y values change. And you look at if they are adding or subtracting a constant, multiplying or dividing a constant, or if they're changing at a linear rate. Now writing an equation, I hope it's clear that this one is a straight line. Each dot is two higher than the previous dot. So I can type in my function y equals 2x plus 7 enter and it goes through the dots. Here this one is not linear because it curves. It's also not exponential because it curves back up on itself so it's quadratic. So I suggest typing y equals x squared and then saying eh, that's a little bit too high and when you want to move something down just try subtracting from it. it used to have mx plus b with the y-intercept at the end. Now we have x squared plus b and the y-intercept is still at the end. Here we have an exponential pattern, and it looks like the y values are getting three times bigger as we move to the right. So y equals 13.5 times 3 raised to the x. 13.5 is the y-intercept. Each y value is three times bigger than the previous one. You can use a calculator. You don't have to be able to do it in your head. You don't have to be able to do it quickly. But uh, you can use a calculator to find that growth factor of 3. Similarities and differences, linear patterns don't have exponents, quadratic patterns have an exponent of 2, exponential patterns have an exponent of x. Here, we're just sort of determining sort of same sort of idea, who's right here, what type of a pattern is it. This one is an exponential pattern because it goes divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. It doesn't change by subtracting the same number, and it doesn't change at a linear rate. This one, Joseph thinks negative 2 plus 6x. Well, we can just try it out. 
let's try y equals 2 plus 6x. Let's try it out with this right here. If I go, does 8 equal 2 plus 6 times 2? And let's try it out. 8 equals 2 plus 12. That is not true. So Joseph is wrong. Joseph made a mistake that's pretty easy to make. He saw that this goes up by plus 6 and just grabbed it as the slope. What's Joseph's mistake? Joseph's mistake is that the x values don't count by 1. Because the x values count by going plus 2, plus 2, the slope is a rise over run of 3, not of 6. So Joseph is not correct. Slide 11 here. This is a super important one. It looks curvy, so how do you know if it's quadratic or it's exponential? One way is to look at the y values and see, is there a consistent multiplier? I can tell you that there's not a consistent multiplier. You should probably grab a calculator to double check that. But there's one other point that's really crucial, and that's this point over here. 0, 0. If your graph contains 0, 0, guess what? You're not going to have an exponential function that will go from 0 to 0 0.8. You can't multiply 0 by something and have it end up non-zero. So that was quadratic. And then you can worry about the extensions at another time. If you have questions about the extension, please feel free to ask, and I'm happy to go over them. But for right now, this video is already long enough. So thank you. Comment, ask questions. I'll help out.